Hello everyone. I'm following up on a request from a viewer again to discuss the precise epsilon delta definition of limits and continuity, and in particular talk about some examples where a function is discontinuous or where a limit doesn't exist. So I have one more example that I'd like to go through. Let me write it down here. So our function is again going to be defined differently depending on whether x is rational or irrational. If x is irrational, we set the value of the function equal to zero. If x is rational, that means it, it can be written as a fraction, p over q, in lowest terms. And we set the value of the function in that case to be 1 over the absolute value of q, so 1 over the value of the denominator. So I happen to know what the properties of this function are in terms of continuity and limits but I've never actually worked through the details myself in terms of proving them. So hopefully I can just kind of figure out the proper argument right away. Uh, it should be, I think it should overall be fairly straightforward. Um, the main ideas are gonna be that, you know, for uh, any open interval contains both rationals and irrationals. And if the open interval is centered around an irrational, then as the interval gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the rationals that are inside that interval will have to have a larger and larger denominator. Okay, uh, basically the idea there is that if you have an irrational and you want to approximate it better and better by rationals, then the denominator will have to get larger and larger. Okay, so let me write down first um, the properties that this function has in terms of continuities and limits, and then we'll go ahead and try and do the proof. So the first statement here is that as we take a limit as x approaches x naught of f of x, then we get zero regardless of the value of x naught. If x naught is rational or irrational, any limit as we approach x naught will be equal to zero. And this in fact immediately gives us the result about continuity. Um, a function being continuous at x naught simply means that as you approach x naught, f of x is equal to x naught, uh, f of x naught. Um, and so if x naught is irrational here, if this is irrational, you'll notice the right hand side is the value of the function. So if we prove this limit for irrational values of x, then we have shown this first part, that f is continuous at the irrationals. And when we show that this is true for uh, rational values of x naught, well, the right-hand side is never gonna be equal to this. And so then we've shown that the function is not continuous at the rationals. So let's work through now um, proving this limit for any value of x naught. I might have to uh, think for a little while um, and go through some rough work. So let me do that and then I'll come back and explain the whole argument. Okay, I've proven um, the first part of this, at least when x is rational. Uh, and let me walk through the argument now. It took a little bit longer than I expected, but anyway. So you know, we're basically, we're trying to show a limit here. And so uh, we start by letting epsilon be arbitrary. The first thing I'm going to do is recognize that I can always find a natural number such that this is going to be true. So one divided by r strictly less than epsilon. That can always be done by choosing 
are sufficiently large. Now I'm going to consider some interval around x0. Uh, any arbitrary interval around x0 is fine here. Um, but I suppose, I suppose we want there to be at least one rational in this interval with a denominator less than r. So maybe you should choose this interval to be uh, sufficiently large. So we take this open interval. There are, this interval, of course, has a whole bunch of rational numbers in it. Um, but the number of rationals in that interval with a denominator less than r has to be finite. Okay, so um, I now have a finite collection of numbers in this interval where which are rational, which have a denominator less than r. And now if there's a finite number of them, there has to be a closest rational of this type to x0. Um, and it's not going to be x0 itself because, uh, well, I suppose it could be actually, right? I guess less than r. I guess I need this to be less than r and q. Okay. So the finite number of rationals in the interval with denominator less than both r and q. So that means there is a closest rational to x0. There might be two symmetrically on each side of x0, but, um, but uh, the point is there is a closest rational, which is some positive distance away from x0. Uh, we know it's positive distance because all the denominators we're considering here are less than q. Um, so in particular, it can't be x0 because the denominator cannot be equal to q. Okay, so we'll call this distance delta, which we know is positive. And now we have the following. If x minus x0 is less than delta, then either x is irrational or x is rational with a denominator greater than both r and q. Um, I just realized I have to switch up my argument a little bit. So I'm going to make this so that r is chosen larger. Hmm. Okay, no, this still works, I think. Yeah, we only need it, we only need it like this. Okay, so um, we're just choosing R to be large, larger so, so that one over R is less than epsilon and less than one over Q. So then we only need to consider rationals with denominator less than r. Wait, less than. No, I guess we still need less than r and q. Yeah, well, there will still be a closest rational here. It cannot be equal to x0 itself because we're only looking at denominators less than q. And if this is less than delta, then the denominator... There, there, are, no, there are no rationals in this interval with denominator less than r. And so this denominator has to be greater than r. Okay, yeah. Um, and 
if if f is if x is irrational, then this is equal to zero. But if it's rational, it's equal to one over n. But we're saying uh, n has to be greater than r. And um, one over r r has been chosen so that one over r is less than epsilon. Can we do this independently of Q? I think the, the only the only thing that's been throwing me off is like Q doesn't actually matter except to show that um, except that we don't want we want there to be at least one rational in this interval which is not equal to X naught itself. Um, Yeah, that should be fine. I'm, I mean, maybe there's a very, very small thing going wrong in here, but uh, it, um, it it should be able to be fixed. Um, okay, what about if x is irrational? You know what I think? If x is irrational, if x naught is irrational, everything here still works. We simply choose r large enough. There, we just eliminate all references to q. We don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. This interval. Um, this interval will still have a finite number of rationals that have a denominator less than r. And so there's the closest one to x naught. We call that distance delta. So now there are no rationals within a distance of delta of x naught that have a denominator less than r. Um, and so this is going to be true again. Yeah, so uh, this limit is equal to zero everywhere. For all values of x naught, and that shows immediately that um, that shows immediately that this function is continuous at the irrationals, but not continuous at the rationals. Yeah, uh, a couple of little stumbles here, but in the end, I think I'm I'm, I'm fairly confident with everything that's gone on. Um, you know, it's just a question of being comfortable with recognizing things like within any open interval, there's an infinite number of rationals and irrationals, but the smaller that interval is, the larger the denominators of the rationals uh, will get. Um, yeah, if I have any more comments about this one, um, I'll write them down in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching.